Howdy guys, Patriot out here once again in the beautiful Arizona desert. It's gorgeous today. I've got a little bit of cloud cover which is keeping the uh, temperatures down and uh, wearing a long sleeve shirt just to kind of keep the sun off of me. But uh, I wanted to go ahead and pick up where we left off last week. And uh, last week we spent a lot of time where we spent the whole video talking about different offhand positions. Well, we, we covered all unsupported uh, positions. We covered many common positions that one could use if they don't have a tripod handy. So you might be asking, so Patriot, why, why so much emphasis on the stabilized or steady binocular and, and everything? You know, you might be thinking, a person might be thinking, hey, I hold up my uh, 10 power binocular and I can see what I'm looking at. You know, there's a sailboat out there on the ocean and it's got red and white sails on it. Well, that's not the kind of looking that we're talking about. And when you're talking about an outdooring application, we're, we're looking at much finer detail than sailboats on the water or look at that mountain over there. I mean, we can see those things with the naked eye, uh, but looking at the detail of something is a whole different story. I came up with a way to demonstrate why this makes a difference. And what I'll first show you is a picture of an object that I have placed out there about 100 yards, it's about 90 to 100 yards. Don't have my rangefinder with me today, but I'm carrying, uh, carrying my large uh, Eureka pack today, so I was trying to keep the weight down because I've been out here a long time. But, uh, so at first, I'm going to replicate a 50 millimeter equivalent uh, 35 millimeter camera. And I'm going to point it at the object out there, and which would be which would really represent seeing it with the naked eye. So let's start with that. Then after that, I'm going to show you with the image stabilization turned off, I'm going to increase the uh, uh, magnification on the camera to the equivalent of a 10 power binocular, which is about 565, about a 565 millimeter, uh, 35 millimeter equivalent lens. Then after that, we're going to take a look at it on the tripod, and you'll be able to see the difference that, that it actually makes. Now for this one-to-one -one equivalent that I'm doing, I am doing it from a tripod, and the reason for that is because this is to simulate our own vision as we stand there. Typically our eyes are very stabilized inside of our cranium there, so there's not a lot of movement going on if we're, we're standing so, still. Probably can't see anything out there, but... Uh, Let's see, it's real close to the middle of the screen. Now it's uh, just in the middle of the screen and slightly high. Okay guys, now I've got the image stabilization shut off as if we would be looking through a binocular. And I'll increase the uh, magnification to about 560 millimeters. We're pretty close to a uh, 8 to 10 power binocular. Okay, and now we'll do the exact same thing, but this time we're on the tripod. Now the image stabilization is still shut off but we don't need it on the tripod. Now look at the difference in detail that you can pick up when that image isn't shaking. I mean, it's night and day. Now, note that that piece of uh, poster board out there with the deer on it is in plain view and slightly less than 100 yards away. There's no brush in front of it. It's right out in the open. Now imagine if we obscured that to so that we could only see maybe one rear leg or one hind leg and part of its nose or part of its head. And you can see the difficulties when we take it off the tripod in finding that. So we're going to So we're going to come back off of the tripod now and you can see the uh, image without stabilization or without support. Uh, 
That's about as steady as I can hold that. Okay, and we're back on the tripod once again. And, you know, I talked about, imagine if that target was obscured uh, with some trees or some foliage, like the doe that uh, I ran into on the way out here. You know, she was only about 100 yards away when I first saw her, and she had been watching me. And when she finally did decide to move, she moved with a purpose and ran up over the hill. And so, you know, I saw that it was a deer. I couldn't determine much about her. I didn't even have time to get my, my binoculars up, really, before she crested the hill. But uh, as soon as I got over the crest, she was 300 yards away and still, still moving, but had stopped to watch me come up over the hill. So imagine if we tripled this distance and had a shaky image and you can see how difficult it is to ascertain what you're looking at with a shaky image so that's why so much emphasis is put on a steady view and the ultimate steady view comes from a supported an optic which is on a tripod okay so hopefully that turned out to be a pretty good example of that deer out there, that deer downrange, that poster, and why it's so important to have a steady or a stabilized image. And there's a couple ways that we can do this, and we covered some of those last week, and that is to supplement your offhand image with uh, a counterweight or a, uh, uh, or a different position, uh, seated position, prone position, kneeling position these that give you a little bit more support than just a conventional offhand position uh, like we like we talked about last night and it's interesting looking through these eight powers that's the, almost the exact same shake that you guys witnessed on that deer back there it's it's actually it's very similar so I hope that I replicated that pretty well. Now just imagine if that deer was 300 yards away instead of 90 yards. And imagine if it had foliage sticking up in front of it so that you could only see a hind leg or just part of its neck or maybe it's just its muzzle and, and its eyes. It can see you, it knows that you're walking, but you can't see it because it's standing still. Now just a casual glance in the binocular or sweeping, doing a panoramic sweep, looking for whatever you're looking for. In this case, it's a simulated deer. Maybe it's a real deer. But that, that animal can see you, but you can't see it. So again, that's why we're talking about stabilized images you can here. Supplement your offhand image by leaning up against a tree, going prone, kneeling position, sitting position. You can do it with a stabilized binocular which there's not many of them out there and they tend to have have a lot of other problems or you can do it with a tripod and that's what we're gonna focus on today is uh, using the tripod and the difference that it makes you already saw that difference and now I'll show you what that looks like okay guys first tripod position we're gonna look at is the uh, full standing position now I know that a lot of point-and-shoot tripods a lot of lightweight tripods like the one that the cameras on now won't even go up to the height of a, a, a average size person so this one does and we'll cover this first in case you have a tripod this size or are thinking about getting one so what I'm going to do is make sure that the uh, leg sections are extended all the way before I lift up the center column that's because the center column is not as steady as the legs are so extend the legs as far as they go then if you have to go higher do the center column we'll take our binocular set it right up here we'll look at mounts later and cover that later but basically uh, maybe just an inch higher here now I can stand vertically here in glass with a nice steady image now since there's a little bit of a breeze today it does actually move this just a little bit and induces a little bit of oscillation there. And it is detectable, but it's far better than just the offhand binocular hold. 
The other thing is try not to touch or bump the tripod. I normally just take my hands, get them away, and put them behind me. Now sometimes if you jostle the tripod or there's a lot of wind, just simply by putting a finger on it like this helps to cancel out the effect of the winds shaking the tripod.